What's up, wrestling fans? I'm going to drink this bottle of Corona. I'm just kidding. It's pee. I filled it up last night. Um, Charlotte Flair is going to be out for a while. The rest of the year, maybe. Uh, we got the Knight family, Paige's family. Paige has been one of the biggest virtue signalers all over the place on Twitter about speaking out and, oh, so brave about you and whatever. And so, you know, it's just kind of weird to see her family is a mess. So, you know, Sarah Knight issues a statement regarding abuse allegations before deleting social media. Sarah Knight recently issued a statement in response to the recent physical and psychological abuse against her, others in the Knight family and their promotion, the World Association of Wrestling, WAW, and Bellatrix. She denied the allegations and announced her departure from pro wrestling before deleting all of her social media accounts. Uh, so for my last three days, I have sat wondering what exactly I need to justify this bloodthirsty hunt. My life, uh, you all want me to die. You think by pushing buttons, I'm going to lie there and just take it. Firstly, I refute any statements regarding kissing a minor that's sick. And in Norfolk, police um, want to come and chat with me about it. I welcome it. Where were the parents during this apparent act? Ten years old at a show alone. I don't think so. I hope you have good lawyers. I will welcome any police inquiry into this matter. I absolutely deny this. By the way, this is similar to the type of language I was using yesterday. If I was accused of something like this, I'd be like, yeah, you want to look at my phone? And I'm talking about Velveteen Dreams uh, accusations, which just seem to have disappeared for some reason. Um, but yeah, this is uh, what's going on, man. All kinds of false accusations everywhere. Um, some of them are, are real accusations. But basically, people are being encouraged to come forward even with stories that aren't true and even with stories that are BS or just almost not a non-issue. Um, and that's what's going on. Are there people coming forward about stuff that really happened that's creepy and maybe it needs to be addressed? Yes. But there's a lot of people coming forward. It's just part of the whole cancel culture. And these young, new people who are entitled idiots out there uh, who don't know, who have grown up on this new social media internet that we have, um, it's obvious as day what's going on. But yeah, she's denying everything and she's out of there. And, you know, again, like I said, how long until someone commits uh, suicide? You know, how long until someone's dead because of all this stuff? You know, because of like a vague sort of situation that happened 15 years ago or eight years ago or three years ago. You know, how long until someone's gone? You know, not here anymore. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the suicide to happen. And I'm dead serious about that. I'm waiting for the person to kill themselves who didn't do anything or barely did anything. And uh, they're attacked all over the place, lose their job, Twitter, everything goes nuts. Their whole life completely changes in a day because of weird allegations that weren't even true or were just so minor. It was crazy. Um, you know, I wait for uh, someone to end themselves. You know, luckily, you know, no one's done that yet, but it's it, it could happen any at any moment. So. Doesn't take too much more. Uh, Charlotte Flair reportedly out of action for the rest of the year. According to a report from Talk Sport, Flair's status in WWE after a storyline injury was set to take her out of action for a long time. She'll be taking an extended break. It is an idea that she will return for the Royal Rumble next year. Wow. They noted that Vince McMahon could bring back Charlotte as early as September after she recovers from her surgery, but that is not the current plan. So she's going to have a surgery, and then she's going to um, be out the rest of the season or the year. Um, there may be some kind of a issue that I don't know about. There's an injury angle. I know that. WWE issued a storyline statement saying that Charlotte may have suffered a potential collarbone fracture. So I, I don't I don't yet know exactly what exactly is going on with Charlotte, but it looks like she's going to be gone the rest of the year. 
And, you know, she's one of the best in-ring performers. You may hate her commentary. You may be sick of her overall. I mean, I, I kind of am, but she is in the ring one of the better one of the better woman wrestlers, at least on the main roster. We've seen the women have amazing matches on NXT and better matches than Charlotte Flair. But Charlotte Flair usually goes out and gives you a seven every time, in my opinion, no matter, almost most of the time. But she does do a lot of the same moves a lot of times. It's very Finn Balor-like in a way. She Charlotte Flair is kind of like Finn Balor and Triple H sort of combined in a way. Like She kind of goes out there and has the same sort of match every time. Um, so she always kind of delivers a solid, I think, a solid like six or seven or whatever. Whereas a lot of other women kind of fall flat around a four or five sometimes or six or whatever. She kind of can rise up to an eight sometimes. Um, but we've seen a lot of other women have eight out of 10 matches in NXT and things like that. But we've never seen mostly not a lot of women on the main roster have had really good matches on the main roster for whatever that is or whatever reason that is. I don't know. You'd have to tell me, but um, that's the situation right now. And uh, we'll have to wait to find out about more information about that. Um, I'm going to be putting up a podcast on Patreon at some point later. So look for that. I hope you guys do. And um, we talked about your favorite food. I asked a question about favorite food. So we're going to be talking about some favorite foods and some other stuff, man. It's, it's been great on the Patreon. Thanks to Max Maxwell for signing back up under the $5 Cronin Club. Come join in the Cronin Club on Patreon, man. And uh, hit me up on my social media accounts everywhere. And uh, we'll talk about all this stuff. Uh, more to come. Tonight is Throwdown on my other channel. So look for that as well. And uh, we'll see you uh, a little bit later. Become a member of the Cronin Club by going to patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Get eight hours of bonus content a week not seen on YouTube. YouTube doesn't like the controversial stuff, but I am free to do what I want to do on Patreon. They won't be taking down these videos, so get the following for just five bucks a month. Access to polls, the Corrupted Podcast, every week, Morning Madness, the ability to download all audio to save your data plan, episodes of Monetize This, uploaded in audio form, all of my audio song parodies available for download and listenability on the Patreon app, direct contact with me, the community, on your PC or the Patreon mobile app. All this and so much more. Available on Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Join the Cronin Club today. The club is calling. Cronin Club. Don't forget, when you become a patron, you guys not only support the channel, but you also get access to thousands of older episodes from the last two to five years on Patreon. Corrupted, After Dark, Jake and Joe podcast, me and my wife's podcast, Till Death Do Us podcast, and just so much more, guys. There's a ton of stuff on Patreon. Get over there. There are still over 340 patrons, active patrons right now, 340 of you guys, uh, and it's a big family. It's a big army. And it's a big party on the JCS Patreon. Download the app. Check it out. Use the search feature. Go back and listen to all the old stuff. It's wild. Shout out to all the $25 producers, guys. Here's some other videos popping up right now in your feed, though, if you don't want to do that. And continue watching here on uh, the Joe Cronin Show. Thanks, guys, for listening.